squad cast where us the squad comes together and talk about all the things that we love in the community i'm joined with caboose we have alex and Malik joining us this time around also happy labor day all of our american friends Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like the, the two Americans. Oh, yeah, I'm American. Oh, yeah. That, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you guys do anything special for your long weekend or? No. no. Stayed up way too long <laughs> watching the <laughs> last week playoffs. But that was about it. I just watched Overwatch League and yeah, nice. just relaxed. Yeah. Nice. So confirmed Labor Day long weekend is for doing absolutely nothing. And you know what? Nothing, nothing's wrong with that, right? Non-labor. <laughs> Non-labor. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> All right, chat. Today we have a bunch of really cool topics. We're going to be talking about the Avengers uh, reviews that are in. Um, it, did it do better than expected? I don't know. We'll have to talk to Caboose about that. We're also going to be talking about Nintendo's surprise direct that unveil, uh, sorry, reveals tons of Mario love for Mario's 35th anniversary. We're going to be talking about the growing mainstream appeal of esports organizations, and GameSpot is under fire for military sponsorship. I feel like there's no surprise around that one, but we'll get to that one last. First, let's just uh, start off with the Avengers review before we actually get to that chat. I'm going to okay. remind you guys, keep all your thoughts going and put them down in the chat because we want to hear your voices as well as you could tweet us um, at squad state. If you got any really cool clips, I mean, Alex, I feel like she does crazy things during streams. Like <laughs> she makes really large expressions. So it'd be yeah, good even I'm to crazy. screenshot that and send it to us. Let's all do one. So then they have something to screenshot if we all do one. What? Stay oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I know. We're like, we're we're we gotta count We gotta count it down so okay. that we can all pose. Five. Four, three, two, one. Okay. <laughs> there we go. We got a screenshot going. <laughs> now that uh, Caboose isn't lost anymore, why don't you kick things off <laughs> with the topic that you want to obviously- I was lost? You were lost when you were posing for these screenshots. You're like, wait, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, okay, I was a little lost. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> but yeah. you are found. And I we feel like found. we found a lot of Avengers news. So it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Marvel's Avengers is out uh, officially. It was out for digital deluxe owners, or not digital, but deluxe edition owners on the 1st of September. Came out officially on the 4th, and a bunch of reviews have now like hit Metacritic and online. We got about 31 critic reviews available on Metacritic, and right now it's sitting at about a 71. Originally, it was about a 73, it's been slowly kind of dwindling down, which is unfortunate. Uh, and then there's also a couple of sales numbers. Daniel Ahmad, who is an insider, tweeted out uh, earlier today saying that Avengers opening in the UK wasn't that impressive. It was fairly middling and that there isn't data outside of the UK yet. But apparently, globally, the pre-orders for the game, including digital pre-orders, were below expectations prior to launch, especially in Europe. Now, this is tough. This is tough news. Um, a lot of people were expecting that regardless of the quality of the game, the brand name, the Avengers being the game's title and all that, the cover, all that stuff was going to be enough for the game to sell. Unfortunately, it looks like it's come out to, it's, it's a 7 out of 10 average. It's not horrible, but clearly not something spectacular like I'm assuming Marvel Games and the folks at Crystal Dynamics were hoping. The only silver lining here is that this is a games as a service. It is a game that is planned to continue to add content over years to come, as they say. Uh, all the DLC is going to be free, including new characters, new regions, uh, new story missions. That comes with a caveat, though, of there being quite a few microtransactions in the game. I haven't launched my official review of the game yet, but I do have a couple of criticisms, specifically the microtransactions. They're, a, they're pretty outrageous mm. for a $60 was, game. That was one of our concerns when we spoke first talked yes. about the Avengers game um, that the microtransactions would be a huge issue. And it, it's unfortunate to see that they went that route. Um, you do bring right. up an interesting point, though, because it's the Avengers, you know, uh, franchise. You think it would have sold so much, right? Um, right. Yeah. But maybe this is a case of like relying too much on the name. 
Maybe. I mean, I, I will say the game actually has like a pretty solid story mode. Like it's it's way more than I was expecting. I was almost worried going into the game. I was like, oh man, this might be really heavily focused on the multiplayer and the co-op aspect and just not doing enough in terms of like a single player story. But there's a pretty well-written single player storyline. There's some great representation in there with a character like Kamala Khan, who's uh, who's been like, She's awesome. Sandra Saad, who, who performed for the character, she's amazing. All the performances, I think, are great. Troy Baker, Nolan North, Laura Bailey, all of them, I think they're fantastic in the game. There's a lot of qualities to Marvel's Avengers. It's just, I think, the game probably needed a little more time. It needed a little more time for them to iron out the kinks, make sure it doesn't launch so buggy and with a lot of frame issues. Uh, if it got maybe one more year, this could have ended up launching a much better game. But again, it, it's games as a service, right? And and I think unlike something like Anthem, which was pretty much dead on arrival, this is something that will survive regardless of not like below expectation sales and all that stuff. I feel like this is a game that inevitably more and more people are going to buy over time when they add DLC characters. Like they got Hawkeye on the way. They confirmed Black Panther. I, I believe they were going to reveal him uh, during yeah. one of their, their presentations. But of course, due to the circumstances... Yeah. Um, they they weren't able to do that, but I, I believe they have confirmed like he's on the way. Essentially, we know Spider Man's coming out. It's a PlayStation exclusive. Everybody has their with opinions the on that. Yes, wait, what's with the wings? Yeah, yes. with wings. the with the armpit wings. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we know we know Spider Man's on the way. So I feel like you know, especially when next gen comes out, because this game is coming to next gen, you might see a lot more people over time buying this game when more content is added and that's honestly what i'd recommend to anybody who's on the fence about getting avengers i just wait it out like if you're okay with waiting it out if you're not super worried about potentially being spoiled about the story of the game just hold off wait for next gen you're gonna have more content in there from the get-go it's gonna look better run better perform better on the next gen consoles and you're gonna be closer to the release of new dlc characters so i feel like it just just waiting it out will be of everyone's best interest because clearly at launch this game did come out with a couple of problems but i i don't know there are things that i really like about it there are things that i really don't like and well, there's there's stuff that i'm in the middle on but overall it's it is unfortunate that the game launches at, at a 71 i would hope that it would launch with like a much better metacritic score but hopefully uh, hopefully it goes up over time yeah well, well, and that's the thing. Yeah, I think it is unfortunate that it launched at a lower score. However, we do usually see that with games uh, uh, as a service. Yeah. Um, we usually see them start off with a lower waiting, rating and go up. So, like, even this little dip that Avengers is having right now um, yeah. with, you know, it's been out like a week, not even. Um, I feel like this is pretty normal uh, just because... The developers are really pushing getting the game out there in the hands of fans. Um, whereas the content side, although I've heard also as well from uh, many other people that the story is really good. Um, I think a lot of people wanted more from the story. I have not played it yet. Um, not sorry, from not from the story, but more from the game in particular uh, with the yes. multiplayer. So it doesn't feel so isolated. And I feel like all those things are things that we could flesh out. The unfortunate thing is when you sell a game as, you know, this big title that's going to allow mm -hmm. you to do so many things, um, it's going to be on Stadia. Remember that? That they were pushing that. <laughs> 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 Remember Stadia? <laughs> um, it, it's just unfortunate that the marketing amped it up so much. Um, so you have to ask yourself, is this just a result of maybe the year that we're in? Like, I know even with with COVID happening and people being in isolation, games are selling at an all time high. Like um, in our next story, I'll kind of get to that. Um, but I feel, and we saw that with the last of us as well, breaking records. Um, but yeah. I do feel like with a game like the Avengers where people could look at the marketing and say, okay, I'm not too sure because it's so multiplayer heavy because it was yeah. very much marketed that way as multiplayer. I'm not too sure that game's for me. And I think that's a, la a larger audience than maybe um, they realize, the devs realize, uh, would be affected by this. Right. Yeah, I, I certainly see that being the case as well. Um, and, and you're right. There have been a lot of cases of games as a service where this happens. The game comes out, doesn't really reach crazy review standards, um, but it gets better over time. You know, you look at something like Destiny, which has a, a 76 on Metacritic and obviously 
Destiny's a friggin' juggernaut in games yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, but then you also, like on the other side of the spectrum, you look at Anthem, which launched at a 54 on Metacritic and is pretty much dead in the water waiting for a full like overhaul for now. Overhaul, yeah. So, I so, so for Anthem. Sea of Thieves, <laughs> <laughs> sea of know, thieves is, R. yeah, R. Sea of Thieves is um, an sea interesting, thieves. No Man's interesting Sky. thing to pull up. Yeah. 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 Um, Bad but about Anthem. How- yeah, Anthem, rip Anthem. Can we just have a moment of why? <laughs> I mean, I heard it was bad, but I wasn't sure like why. It's like what what happened it, to that game? Yeah, it was just lack of content in the mechanics. They had ideas for the mechanics, but they weren't fully fleshed out. I mm-hmm. think with Avengers, give it like five years, and it's gonna still be going strong. I think yeah. it's gonna yeah, be one so. of those games that's built to last. I mean, when Disney acquired the rights for Marvel and they started doing Iron Man and they started doing all the solo films, they were building up, you know what I mean, building up the universe and, and getting yeah. that ready. I think that they mm-hmm. can do the same thing with the game if they just keep that mindset in. And, and like you said, not focus so much on the marketing and trying to get hype, but focusing on building the core to the game and then just expanding on it because it looks fun. And I've heard people say that besides the little bugs and glitches, they have a great time playing it. They just don't play it for extended periods of time. Yeah, and I think yeah. that may be what gets well. You know what got them in the reviews. Like, like for me as a fan. Sorry to cut you off, Camille. No, no, but no, like, no. as a fan of of games like Destiny, who someone who is very much not uh, not very much, but pretty into RPGs, uh, Avengers is solid in that. Like a lot of people look at the game. And immediately the first impression is, oh, it's a button masher. And that that frustrates me as someone who's put like a lot of hours into the game. Because when you start to progress through the skill trees and you unlock a ton of different abilities for each character, you start to realize that the combat is very in-depth in Avengers. You just have to, you know, do it. Like you had you you can button mash in any game. There you can button mash in the Spider-Man game, you can button mash in any of the Batman games, but it's up to you, the player to try and master the skills that are provided to you through the skill trees. And that's exactly what you can do in Avengers. And that's what I've been trying to do. I've been playing a lot of Captain America. Uh, again, I know Canadian Captain America is one of my favorite <laughs> Avengers. Weird. I know. Right. Well, it's okay. Um, it's Labor Day. It's, you're allowed. Yeah, I'm allowed. Mm-hmm. And also the voice Just of Captain America was in my Twitch chat. So that was <laughs> awesome. Um, but yeah, so I've been playing a lot of Captain America and I started to realize how in depth it actually is. And when you start to get some of the end game content, some of the higher level stuff, a whole new portion of the game like opens up to you and it's awesome. There is a lot of content in there. I feel it's just, is it content that I can play for weeks on end? I don't know. So yeah. we'll see where the game goes. Well, I'm still, I'm sure again, that it's going to sell enough with the DLC and all that to keep people coming back and to get more people to buy the game. It's going to survive. But whether or not it will survive with or yeah. without Iron Man. Yeah. Whether uh, or not it'll live on for years, I don't yeah. know. That's that's the question. Um, I'm really happy to know that you spent so many hours button mashing. Mm. Oh, I'm kidding. Okay. I'm kidding. I'll see you guys hey. later. Uh, yeah, find a new host for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I actually want to draw a comparison because you remember DC Universe Online? Yes. Yeah. I that do. game uh, release, a massive game. Uh, yeah. I remember downloading that and like having nightmares of like what I'm going to delete next to download that game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, it was massive. But we saw it was very, uh, the service for that game was long lasting. Um, mm-hmm. Even last year, they released the, I think it was Aquaman. Was it Aquaman DLC? Uh, where People you still go- play to this day. Yeah, Mm -hmm. but like that is such a long lasting game. However, the community is very niche. Yeah. Do we think that we'll see that with this Avengers game? Uh, No, I think this can reach a little bit of a wider audience than DC Universe Online did. Because, yeah, DC Universe Online is very niche. Um, It's not one of these like super polished AAA looking games. It's, it is straight up, it's one of those games, it's free to play. Yeah. You you get it for your kid on, on a crummy computer or laptop. And they just, they have something to play. And that's honestly like not to diss the game because there, there's some cool stuff in there, but that's kind of all that the devs hope for <laughs> or all that like DC really hopes for out of that game is, you know, somebody's parents or a kid's parents 
are just going to download the game for them so that they have yeah, something to play. A lot of fan service. You got to give them a yes, the yes. Do a lot of research. Oh, for sure. Into the different comic books, and like that's something I appreciate. Yes, uh, yes. From that game, um, but you did mention something. It is free to play. Yeah. Do you think if Avengers was free to play, it would justify all the microtransactions that we're seeing? Oh, 1000%. But I feel like there's too much content in there to make it free to play. That would be a massive risk on Marvel and Crystal Dynamics part. Because if it, if, it, if it, I mean, if the multiplayer was just free to play, that could be an intriguing, enticing offer. But again, I feel like I still feel like there's too much content in there to make it free to play. I feel like there's still too big of a risk. Um, if you did something, I, I don't know, honestly, I don't know a way that they could really make that work because honestly, even the cosmetics, while they, the prices are outrageous and some skins are cool. It's not one of those things, any, any of the things that they offer for microtransactions. It's not really something that I'm like dying to pay for. You know, if I wasn't covering the game, it wouldn't be something that I would actively seek out spending my money for, you know? Okay. Gotcha. How much so, is the game? It's six dollar game, like a yeah, like base price for a game. Yeah. 70, Do you think we'll see a sixty? Oh. Well, yes, yeah, sixty-nine. Is it? Well, in Canada, it's seventy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Right. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, that was nice of you. To cover for me. <laughs> of course. Like, of course, Alex. Right <laughs> the real Captain America, right here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank well, you. it's so unfortunate to know that um, a legacy brand like Avengers didn't kick off the way that everyone hoped uh, it to. Yeah. But I feel like we all agree that the future of the Avengers game is probably bright. Yeah, when Spider-Man yeah. gets added, like, like, listen, the Avengers is a big brand. No doubt about it. Marvel's yeah. a big brand. No doubt about it. Spider-Man eclipses both of those as a brand. <laughs> I know that sounds weird because Spider-Man's a Marvel character. But if I were to ask 10 people on the street, do you know what Marvel is versus 10 people on the street? Do you know who Spider-Man is? I promise you that the 10 people yeah. will know about Spider-Man versus maybe nine knowing about Marvel. Spider-Man is a massive IP, which is still part of the problem of them locking it behind just PlayStation. But when that character is inevitably added or showcased, when they start marketing it, people are going to want to get into it, you know? All right, so we'll just have to wait and see when uh, Spider-Man gets added, if Spider-Man could swing and save the Avengers game. Nice. Oh. <laughs> you thinking of that one the whole time? No, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm like, time now. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. But thanks, Alex. Because <laughs> that just reminds me of all the other times where I have to like sit there while everyone else is talking, like, oh, what's something witty I can say? <laughs>